So good morning. Uh, I'm going to show you an app from the future of emergency and crisis response whose goal is to help save lives. Today, our emergency management system is blind. You dial 911 and together with the dispatcher, you engage in dialogue in order for the dispatcher to try to understand how to respond. But our emergency response system need not be blind, not with the prevalence of cell phones in the hands of citizens everywhere. Cell phones, of course, have cameras that provide pictures, and those pictures provide valuable information in the time of a crisis. And if a picture is worth a thousand words, what about video? How much is a video worth during the time of an emergency? Well, of course, video is already used extensively in crisis situations. For example, in the Stanley Cup riots, in Vancouver, over 1,000 of hours of citizen video were streamed to the, sent to the police after the riots. But it was sent after. That meant it came too late for the emergency response community to make use of that information to assist in their situational awareness in real time. But of course, Chicago hockey fans are far less prone to crazy behavior following hockey games, right? Here, it's the basketball fans you have to worry about. Now, today we usually don't stream video. Rather, user, users typically record the video on their smartphones and then subsequently upload them, for example, to YouTube. But that can be a time-consuming and complex process, which means it isn't possible today to deliver that video rapidly to those who are most in need of the information to assist in their decision-making process during those emergencies. Another problem we have to consider is that today's networks can only handle so much. Imagine that all these people were streaming video. An LTE network is going to have a lot of trouble with that. But over gigabit infrastructure, no problem. You could do that in real time. Yet another issue to consider. Who's going to deal with all those video streams? Obviously, this is going to overwhelm one 911 dispatch operator. You need a team. A whole team can deal with it. And that's what we consider. And there are, of course, communities and teams in place that deal with the mountains of data that arrive in crisis situations. And that's exactly where we've aimed our solution. So again, everybody's got their Wi-Fi turned off, right? So thanks to Mozilla Ignite, we've created a solution for real-time emergency response, or RTER, which consists of several components, a mobile app, an HTML web browsing client, and several other pieces. Our system leverages cloud computing and high bandwidth directly to the end user to help effectively deliver and manage multiple video streams from the scene of an incident. I'd like to show you how this works through a simulated emergency and its response. So Will from Mozilla already has RTER installed on his phone. And he's using it now to, he can use it now to broadcast live video of this presentation to his friends. Okay? You can see that live video up on the 911 dispatch screen that's up over here. You've got 911 dispatch and the live video. Over on this side, we have the simulated Chicago UIC police commander or operations center. And his screen is over on the far side there. Now, sorry, that's our police side. Whoa, what's that? Whoa, it's shaking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 911, what is your emergency? I saw the building shaking. It might have been an earthquake. It could have been an earthquake. It might have been a demolition from the nearby buildings. Nobody can be sure. The police operations people need to find out what happened in order to deal with the injured, like this individual here. I've got a video stream from the caller's location. I'm sending this to UIC police. The 911 dispatcher drags the video into the UIC police workspace and then proceeds to find other related videos that might be useful. The UIC police coordinator scrubs through the video. Yeah, I see some shaking. Shaking. It looks like an earthquake or something. I'm going to send responders. Unfortunately, he sees that the video stopped right after the event, so he goes back to the main screen. 
in the meantime, the dispatcher has dragged over a couple of new feeds and can rearrange these to put the most important one in the first position. This reordering immediately takes place on the UIC coordinator screen. I see some new feeds coming in. Thanks, dispatcher. Here's one just outside the building. Yeah, it looks like there's some construction going on out there. Maybe it's from that because I didn't feel any shaking here on campus. Even though the RTR system works with fixed cameras and not just mobile devices, sometimes those feeds are not enough. The UIC police coordinator needs to get a view of what's going on right now inside the building. He notices that there are other RTR users in the area and he can activate them. Oh. I just got something. So the UIC police coordinator's signal was sent to all active RTR apps in his map area, and that includes me. I've started up the app on my phone, and I'm pointing it at the injured party. Yeah, I see somebody injured there in the building. It might be unstable. I'm thinking we're going to have to evacuate everybody. Let's check the south exits and make sure that they're clear. So using his controls on the map, the police coordinator can control me and point my smartphone to the desired orientation, giving me directions through my screen. Yeah, it looks like those are clear. Let's check the north side as well. So again, one of the advantages of our system is not just that it provides live streaming video, but it allows the emergency operator to choose the desired perspective and send me signals so that he can effectively interact with me in that manner. I think I see some smoke or something there. Patrol 23, I think I see fire. I'm going to send a fire response team behind you. Make sure that you enter from the south side because it looks like the north might be blocked by flame. Start evacuating everybody in the building. So that's our demo. Finally, we've also done some thinking about how the Emergency Operations Center, or the EOC, could change in the future to take advantage of video integrated directly in a spatial representation of the environment, again, thanks to high bandwidth networks. And in this example, you see live video integrated in an immersive scene in context with the world around it. And you also see how the EOC has the ability to navigate through the scene using a floor map of the city. Importantly, RTER is real right now. You can visit our website to play with our source code, run the Android APK on our live server, and see the video clips of other components of our system. What you've just seen is the result of a Mozilla Ignite project that leveraged cloud computing and high bandwidth to the end user to provide relevant video and assist in rapid understanding of the most important information in an emergency. Emergency response management no longer needs to be blind. Thank you.